Islam, Islam, Abaragani, Gino Laco Nanni, Bandele, Chief Noble Bandele, Elamin. Uh, this particular subject is the Black Laws edition, uh, the Black Law series, as you will. And, uh, you know, what's been on my mind lately is the uh, student loans, you know. How many of us got student loans out here, you know? I really, I really believe they could be the next market to bust in like similar to the uh, housing uh, bubble that burst in uh, 2008. So I, I think that this needs to be dealt with because uh, very much like what happened with the housing market where they were giving loans and houses to people who could not afford them. And then when it was time to pay up, nobody had money. Uh, this, the, the, the student loans are very similar because the student loan can be given practically to everybody, you know. Uh, and, you know, how, the thing about it is how many of those people, you know, actually finish school? And then you look further, how many of those people actually uh, go on to have more lucrative jobs and actually, you know, do something in their career or, you know, get paid professionally for what they uh, got their degree for. So, you know, there's a lot of circumstances and there's a lot of equations that, that can be found in when you're looking at what the student loan does and how they just give out loans to everybody, you know. Uh, but the, the question is, are student loans fraud? Now, me personally, there are three words that we're going to deal with today from the Black Laws Dictionary. Uh, for those who do not know, the Black Laws Dictionary is very essential in a household. You need to go get one. You need to go buy one today. I got this one at half price bookstores, no, no selling out, but for half price bookstores for like five dollars, six dollars. So I mean, if you can, you, if you got your eye out there, you'll find them. But you need that. Uh, but the three words that we're going to deal with today is based off of what a student loan is. You know, student loan. From what, I, from from my own uh, study and from my own experience with the creditors of the student loan uh, departments, the their, their, their major argument is that you owe the money because you signed a promissory note. Now, everybody remembers when they got the student loans, or I mean any loan for that matter. Uh, it could be a house. But when we got these student loans, we remember signing off on a promissory note. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the definition of promissory note out the Black Laws Dictionary. Understand that. Uh, promissory note. This is also the uh, abridged. This is abridged, so it's not the full. But I just, it doesn't. I just need to give you a general uh, overstanding of the definition. But the promissory note is a promise or engagement, and willing to pay a specified sum at a time therein limited or on demand or at sight to a person therein named or to his order or bearer, a written promise made by one or more to pay another or order or bearer at the specified time, a specific amount of money or other articles of value, okay? Now it goes on to say that it's a signed paper promising to pay another sum of money. Now, okay, Hence the word promissory note. We, we get that. But now it, says, and it also says an unconditional written promise to pay a specified sum of money on demand or at specified date. Okay, we get that. Now, this is the part where it gets tricky. It says that such a note is negotiable if signed by the maker 
and containing an unconditional promise to pay a sum certain in money either on demand or at definite time and payable to the order of the bearer. So now the key word in that last phrase is negotiable. It said such a note is negotiable if signed. So huh what does the word negotiable mean? Well let's go there. The word negotiable According to Black Laws Dictionary, uh, fifth edition, it says that negotiable is legally capable of being transferred from endorsement or delivery, usually said of checks and notes and sometime of stocks and bearer bonds. <laughs> Did you hear that? So, it said that this promissory note is negotiable. And negotiable is saying that it can be transferred, or tr yes, transferred by endorsement or delivery. It, it's, it's the commercial paper, negotiable instruments, or non-negotiable. So let's look at negotiable instruments, which is pretty much the same word. Because they saying that this promissory note is also compared to a check. And I said to go negotiable instrument. So a negotiable instrument, now just before I go into that, understand that these negotiable instruments, these terms that we're using are, are based off of uniform commercial codes, UCCs. This is the real stuff. This is what UCCs really are about. They're not... This, I'm not talking about the straw man and all that stuff right here and all that. But I'm saying that actually when you're dealing with promissory notes, that is a UCC issue. That's where uh, they try to tell you that they don't uh, UCCs don't apply to them. But the terminology and everything that they're using is Uniform Commercial Code. So to, to say that, it says negotiable instrument to be negotiable within the meaning of UCC, Article 3. An instrument must meet the requirements set in Section 3-104. Okay, it says it must be in writing, signed by the marker or drawer. It must contain unconditional promise or order. For example, a check. Hmm. Or to pay a sum, a certain sum of money. It must be payable on demand or at a definite time. It must be payable to the bearer or to order. Pay to the order of Daniel. Pay to whoever, like a check. It says it must not contain any other promise, other obligation or power given to it. So when you got this promissory note, it's got the amount of money you owe on there, say what you owe, and you got your name signed on it. So you saying that you promised to pay that money back based on the promise here. Now, the, the issue is that, huh, I didn't know that a promissory note was negotiable. That it can be used as a check. It also said uh, commercial paper. What's commercial paper? Let's get into it. Commercial paper. It says commercial paper, bills of exchange. Example, drafts, promissory notes, bank checks, and other negotiable instruments for the payment of money, which by their form on their face purport to be such instruments. It says UCC Article 3 is the general law governing commercial paper. Terms include short-term notes issued by corporate borrowers, C, bearer, instrument, instruments, negotiable instruments, short-term paper. Okay? Now, I'm going to stop there because 
I want to I want to give more uh, substance to what these definitions are saying. They're saying that your promissory note is like a check. It's a promise. So, if it's a promise, then they are treating that promissory note as if it's money. As if it's commercial money. Like, like when they said a check, you can go to a store, write a check. A check is what? Nothing but you saying, I promise to pay for this. If you take this paper to my bank, they will pay for me. They'll pay for me out of my account. So it's a note that bears um, something owed from a bar to a lender. That's, that's the same thing as a promissory note because you sit there and say, okay, I promise to pay back $5,945 from this quarter in school from this particular Stanford loan. I promise to pay that. I sign my name. So now, what if they took the check? I mean, that, that they took that promissory note and somehow they opened up an account in that name. Because that promissory note is looked at as money from the signature because the promissory note became commercial paper when you signed it. It became a negotiable instrument when signed. So now you've got to pay back something that you actually created with your signature plus interest. So what that means is that the person that said that they lend the money to you did not actually lend the money to you. That the, according to the Fair Debt Collection Act, the Fair Debt Credit, um, through Uniform Commercial Codes, when you borrow money from someone, they have to actually have the money. So if I borrow $20, from someone, then it has to. They, it should come out of their pocket. They're saying I'm loaning you money, meaning that I actually had the money on hand. Not that I'm gonna loan you money. What I'm gonna do is go get some money from Fred, and then I'm going to charge you this much, so I can pay back Fred and have some money in my pocket. That's a scam. That's called ultra virus. Look that word up. That'd be our last word. And that wasn't even planned. I just thought that we should look this word up because ultra virus is ultra virus is acts beyond the scope of powers of a corporation as defined by its charter of laws a state of corporation of incorporation. The term has a broad application and includes not only acts prohibited by the charter, but acts which are in accesses of powers granted and not prohibited, and generally apply either when a corporation has no power whatsoever to do an act, or when the corporation has the power but exercises irregularly. By doctrine of ultra-virus, a contract made by a corporation beyond the scope of its corporate powers is unlawful. So, ultra virus is saying that if a corporation outstrips its boundaries of, of, of limitate, limited, uh, whatever its limitations are, if it steps outside of its limitations to do some kind of power, then it is by unlawful. NSC, NCS, all these third-party debt collectors uh, have not shown proof to this day. Any question I've asked. And because of that, 
they will never be able to make a move on the money. So if you can put this into some type of dispute with them, not based on what they understand fraud to be, but what you understand the fraud, then you have a case to deal with. Uh, so that's all I got to say on that. That's the first uh, black law lesson. Uh, we're going to get into more black law lessons. Until then, tuta nana. <laughs>